So the other day I had joined 2J during his first ever session of teaching his girlfriend Anna how to ride motorcycles. It was a dry day in the northeast and the sun was beaming down into a relatively large parking lot which made for very ideal conditions for learning how to put around on two wheels. By the time I had reached them, they had been at it for only an hour yet Anna was taking off on her own doing loops around the parking lot and coming to a stop on her own which was amazing to me because you know I learned via the MSF course and before they let you do anything like that usually you're walking the bike around for a few hours feeling out the clutch and whatnot before the instructor you know feels like they're comfortable with you going around the course whether you're ready to or not 2J then insisted that I take the bike around that she was running on for a quick spin myself. It's the 2004 Ninja 250 that we were discussing in that barbecue vlog. He purchased it for only $450 because it wasn't running and the owner just wanted it gone. So $200 worth of carburetor work later and here she is moving like she never left the road. Okay, look, the last three bikes that I have owned were 100 horsepower and up leader bikes that will basically warp into another dimension if you decide that you'd rather end up in next week by simply flicking your wrist. The SV made all of his power at negative zero RPM with an angry growl that you felt in your chest. The FZ1 will happily lift its front wheel with a scream you feel in the back of your neck. And after this huge weight loss program and a few other performance upgrades, I'm hyped to see how quickly the K100 will accelerate with its 1000 cc's finally set free. But when I got on that little ninja, I was taken all the way back to my little rebel. And I had realized that it had been a solid three years since I ridden a beginner bike. In fact, it had been so long that I legitimately forgot how slow, light, easy, low, and calm they were. Like, dude, it, it was so it was so slow that I was thinking, no, 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 this can't be right. Something's broken here. <laughs> Cause look, I, I was balls out in that parking lot, you know, banging through several gears like a knucklehead, waiting for that characteristic rush of a big bike. <laughs> it's so slow. Because, you know, a good amount of motorcycling has to do with muscle memory. So, you know, when you ride the same bike for almost a year, you naturally apply the usual control that you have over it to every other bike that you may end up riding. But no, no, no. This isn't a 150 horsepower bike with racing jeans. This, this is the fabled beginner bike. The Ninja 250. Hell, it, it even goes beyond a Ninja, it's really any beginner bike at all. The message is truly the same. Honestly, it made me smile just how perfect this bike is for beginners because, you know, after three years, I'd forgotten. The fact that Anna was riding around by herself in such little time is really a testament to that. And considering that they only spent $650 all in on this perfectly fine bike, it really seals the deal because I guarantee that if this bike makes it through the learning phase, they'll actually make money selling it. On that update video, someone recommended that I make a video on 125cc bikes and the fact that young new riders are restricted to 125s in many of the European countries. I'm going through the comments on that video from start to finish and I'm doing all the suggestions that I can within reason so thank you so much for leaving them. Despite how relatively often I get asked about this, I tend to refrain from that subject because not only am I not from Europe and thus I can't really offer any anecdotal experience or anything, but also there's pretty much no 125cc bikes sold here in the US save for a few bikes mostly oriented towards the dirt and bikes made a long time ago when 125 cc's was actually a decent size. I also never really deeply discussed the topic of overseas restriction because you know I've already made a video where I say my piece about new riders starting on crotch rockets and why it's a terrible terrible idea. But I, I think it might be worth you know maybe briefly talking about the paradox of my logic in which I think everyone should start on a beginner bike no matter what but at the same time, I think no one should be forced to do so. As someone who has graduated, you know, studying political science, I have an understanding of how closely people clutch their rights to do things that mostly only concern themselves. You see, the problem arises when they're unable to maintain the same logic for things that they hold a specific stance on, but does not actually concern them directly in the same way. My perspective of morality generally rests upon consent and how much your actions will be of direct consequence to others. I will preach to anyone the safest entry into two-wheel life until the day I die, but ultimately in the unfortunate situation that you hurt or end anyone through your inexperience it's probably going to be yourself and this is why i cannot advocate for a european style restriction in the united states see if i were to advocate for any form of restriction i would more than likely push for the courses such as the msf to be more mandatory that way people can get a better idea of what it's like to ride a motorcycle and hopefully understand that a slow bike is just fine for them after that 
Shit, I say let them get that Ninja H2 if they so please. See, there's a few problems with full-on restriction in the United States in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, so feel free to disagree in the comments. The first problem is that there's just not enough of us bikers on the road to make this change in legislation worthwhile. I feel like if the government really started to care about inexperienced people on the road using vehicles beyond their skill level, they would sooner crack down on drivers because, well, they're everywhere. Biking is actually a very sequestered experience, especially if you're one of the few people who actually ride your bike in the winter like me. Whenever we actually actually see another bike in the sea of econo boxes, we make sure to acknowledge them. We make sure that they know that we acknowledge them. And it's for the very reason of, well, there's just not that many of us. Smaller vehicles are more common in Europe than in the USA, and thus these smallest motor vehicles are also more common those being motorcycles. So it makes sense that slower, smaller vehicles can be mandated in regards to motorcycles, especially when they're actually the preferred and generally most suited type of vehicle for the for the masses anyway. In the United States, we have faster roads and interstates, which is why the 125cc motorcycle market is basically non-existent, and even the 250cc motorcycle market is slowly moving up to include 400s and even 650s in the twin and single cylinder segment. The other problem is that the legislation would only be able to focus on those who are just now applying for their license, which means it wouldn't be able to account for those who have motorcycle experience on the dirt or on private tracks, you know, just without a license. These people would have years upon years of experience off the books, but would have to be lumped in with greenhorns whose only two-wheel experience is on a razor scooter. You know, honestly, I don't really find that to be very fair on them, and there would be no way to accurately quantify the experience of those applying for a license, and if it's left to a simple checkbox on the amount of experience you have, well, who wouldn't lie about that? The other problem is the fact that the United States is essentially split into 50 somewhat sovereign nations that are fairly autonomous in how they handle public institutions. So every state has their own DMV and road laws and this is why you have discrepancies from state to state on licensing laws, violations, registrations and everything. The famous one regarding bikers is the fact that only in California is lane splitting officially stated as permissible. Hell, in South Dakota you'll find 14 year olds on the road while in New York you have to be at least 16. So in order to create a cohesive system of bike restrictions in the United States, it would have to be under legislation enacted on a federal level. And I just don't see the federal government making such a huge step over every state for what is essentially a minuscule issue when looked at on a national level. If such legislation is passed on a state level, I can guarantee you that people will find some way to beat the system, like they always do. And really, that brings me to my fourth reason, and I'll speak in terms of NYC for this one. Despite the rampant gentrification and trendiness that New York City faces right now, New York City is still a pretty savage place, and I know for a fact that if they enacted such a policy on a city level, it wouldn't change shit. See, there's people out here I know that have been riding for longer than I ever have, and they would just tell me like, oh yeah, no, I don't have a license, I never had a license. And I just have to sit there confused over what I just heard leave their mouth. A lot of people out here just, they just don't give a shit about the laws. And the city knows that because when it gets hot out, NYPD likes to do random motorcycle only checkpoints in more busy areas where they literally just fish for people with no license, registration or insurance, etc. Not even for moving violations. Hell, not even necessarily for stolen bikes, but just bikers lacking paperwork. It's actually super rampant in the city because of the no chase laws. One time I was stopped and I received five tickets at once very early on when I had my Honda Rebel, but that's a different story. I don't even want to get into that now. But anyway, it sort of made it very clear as to why why people ride dirty because in a huge metropolis like this it's easy to get away now i know this video was a bit heavy on the politics side which is another reason why i avoided the topic but hopefully i got my points across even though i couldn't be as humorous as i liked now the ultimate message of this video is you should start on the beginner bike but you shouldn't be forced to but if you want to hear some more of my points on why I think you definitely should, you can check out this video that I made a little while back on the subject. I'm glad that I got a chance to ride that little ninja because really it reopened my eyes to something that I knew, but didn't exactly remember how much I knew, if that makes sense. Congratulations to Anna on getting into the bike life so quickly. I picked up on just how confidence inspiring beginner bikes are, and even though I think everyone should take after Anna when it comes to getting into bikes, I recognize that it isn't my place to force my views upon you. So. Let's just hope that we can maintain that level of freedom in this great country. Because in the end, I'm just happy to be able to roll with you on the most fulfilling method of transportation ever. Thanks for watching. Now let's go for a ride.